In this demonstration, we're going to use the guided process page template. What we're going to do is we have here a higher button and we're going to hook it up. So when we click on it, we're going to go to a new page where we'll provide information about who we are hiring. And when we create this page, we're going to use the guided process page template, which is one of the templates provided by the Redwood patterns. We'll call this page the higher page. Let's go over to this page and I'll show you the basic functionality here. You're going to see steps and as you start the process, this is going to collapse to the side. You'll see step one, you'll click next and you'll see step two. Okay, basically go through the steps in the process. Now, this is based on a pattern and the pattern also defines a built-in variable, which is what is the current step. Okay, um, if the step current step is null, you're going to be back at the home page. Um, the other thing you need to set for the guided process is you need a primary action, which is what you're going to do at the end. The last step, so we'll define the last step to be a higher button, which is what you're going to see over here. Um, so now if we set this to empty and do a refresh, we're back on the home page. All right, so now that we have the primary action, um, we might want to set the title. Okay. And the subtitle, like that. Okay, so those would appear here and in every one of the steps. Now, the steps themselves are defined over here in the data, and you can manually add steps over here. But usually, what you would want to do is actually have a variable, an array that has all your steps. The pattern also creates a type for you called the step type with the properties of what is a step. Okay. Um, so what we're going to do now is we're going to define a new variable. We'll call it steps and it is going to be an array and the type of the array is going to be step. Okay. Over here, you can provide a default value. I'm going to paste a set of values in here and you can see we basically provide an ID, a title and a description. You can also provide the other properties over here. Um, ID, I'm using sequential numbers, but you can use any string here. It doesn't really matter. It's much easier for me to remember this by using the um, sequential numbers over here. So now if we go back to our page designer, we now bind our steps over here to our array and now our steps are going to be displayed over here the three steps that we defined All right the next thing that you want to do is going to populate the content of each step so when you click start we're going to see an area here where you're going to show information and to do that i'm going to pick up a business object and i'm just going to drag and drop it into the first div that we have here, and I'm going to create a create form. Okay, You can choose which fields to show here. You can, of course, um, reorder them to any order you need them to be in. Just going to move those here. Click Finish. This also creates a button for you. You don't need this button because what you're going to do, I'm going to keep the event, though. Our button at the last step is going to actually do the save so i don't need this extra button all right so we put things in the first div now the idea is that each div is going to be a step in our guided process so we can take for example two of those fields and move them to the second step now you can see that we'll still all seeing all the steps or all the data in this page so what you need to do now is actually go over to the first div and surround it with an if statement. And using, again, a built-in variable we have in the pattern called current step, you're going to check if the current step is equal to the ID of the first step, which in my case is one. Then we're going to show this group of fields. And if it's a number two, we're going to, again, surround the second part with a similar if statement on current step. 
and check whether this is equal to two. Right? So now on step one, we'll sync these fields. And as we go to step two, oh, one of the things to note here, we need to actually have values in the fields, those validation. This whole thing is inside the validation group that makes sure that the values in the fields are valid. Okay. So if we just for now just put um, some junk data and click continue, now we're on step two, you can see we only have two of the fields. Okay. And then we can continue to step three. So we need to define what's gonna be on step three. To do that, I'm gonna pick up a div component and place it inside the validation group over here. I'm going to surround it with an if statement, and I'm gonna check that the current step is equal to three, okay? And then we want to set something here. Now, a little trick to learn. While you're working in the visual editor, there's the input parameter here, which defines what's the current step that you're looking at. So if I need to look at step three, you can just set it to three and go to the last step. Okay, so I'm going to use here one of the cards that we have called the profile card and just put it in here. All right. And um, let's hook up this card to some data. So the avatar is going to be the employee's image. No picture in our case. Then the um, card title is going to be the employee name and the subtitle is going to be the employee country, for example. Okay. Um, and then we have two buttons at the end. We have a cancel. Cancel is actually running throughout the process and the primary action, which is higher in our case. So let's hook up this button. And to do that, we're going to pick up our page template. You can see we already have events for the cancel, so we can decide what to do in a cancel. For example, if we go over here, we can say, hey, when we're canceling, we want to navigate to a specific page, and for example, to the welcome page. Okay, this is what happens when we do cancel. Um, another event that we have here is the before step navigate. We'll handle this in a second. And now let's create the event for the primary action. And in the case of the primary action, what we're going to do is we're just going to call the action chain that creates an employee. Okay. And we're going to pass to it the employee ID or the employee object actually like that. Okay. Let's go to the chain. There's a couple of things we don't need in the chain in terms of um, the validate and is form valid because we're taking care of it um, directly through the validation group we have there in the um, guided process. Everything else is just back to normal. All right, so now the higher button is hooked up to this event. So one more thing that we want to handle is the before step navigate. One of the properties of a step, if we look again at the type, is the status of the step. And as you move through the steps, you can alter the status to different values. One of the values, for example, indicates completion. Okay, so let's return back over here. If we set the current step to null, we're going to do a refresh. We're gonna go back to the first step. Okay. Now, as we go through the steps, each time that we complete a step, we want to indicate this. This is what you can do, for example, in the before step navigate. So let's go over here. You can see that we are checking if the values is, are valid. This is based on the validation group. Uh, and if they're not valid, we're gonna do something. If they are valid, we're gonna go with this flow. So what we want to do here is we're gonna call a JavaScript function. And after that, we're going to assign a variable. Okay. The function that we're going to create is um, a complete step function. And we're going to go to the function and what we're going to pass here is the array of steps and the current step. Okay, those are going to be two parameters. 
and then we're going to find the current step that we're on and we're going to update it to indicate that it's complete. And that's this line of code is going to do that. Um, we'll take the current step and indicate that it's complete. In the, one of those here. And then we're going to return the array after the update. Let's reformat this document like that. We're returning the steps updated. Okay, so back in our action chain, from here we have two parameters that we need to map, the steps and the current step. Okay, those are the input parameters. This function is going to return an array of type step, okay, and we're going to assign that over back into the steps variable over here. So the return from the call function is going to go into steps and we'll start with an empty array like that. All right, so now this process is basically complete and our page is ready to be tested. So let's run our little application. Right, we're starting with a list of employees and we're gonna click hire. This takes us into our application and into the various steps. Now you can see as you hover, we get this nice animation and the description shows up. And then we can click start to start the hiring process. We can see the various steps over here on the side. We're at step one. If we're going to try and click continue, it's going to highlight the fact that we don't have the right info here. Um, so let's update with some information. And then when we click continue, we go to step two, okay? This step has the indicator that it's completed and we can fill in information over here and click continue again. We get our little review option here to make sure that we're okay with the information. This step two is also complete and we can click hire. Okay. And we need to say what happens after the hire because right now we just created an employee. Maybe we want to go back to the homepage. So let's just update our action chain for the primary action chain. Okay. After we create an employee, we can navigate back to the welcome page. Okay. So this would take us all the way back. All right. So I wanted to show you a couple more things. Uh, one of the things is that this is actually a responsive UI as is everything inside the Redwood template. So if we go over here and we click the higher and we're in a mobile device size, you can see the steps are one below the other. As you start, the animation's still there, but we're hiding the side. We do also, the cancel option is in here and you can cancel at any time. If you click cancel over here, you'll go back to the first page. Again, let's go back into the higher um, we'll start the first step and um, we'll add Joe with a salary of 5555. Five, five. Click continue. Country, we'll put him in the US. And for now, we'll skip the picture. Uh, we need a value for the picture, so We'll do an APNG for now, continue. If we don't have a picture, it's not gonna show anything here. And then we can click higher, which will navigate us back to the homepage with Joe detail is already here. So that's basically guided process in a quick overview.